Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Pure Accelerate 2017. Brought to you by Pure Storage. Welcome back to Pier 70 in San Francisco, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. I'm Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman. Scott Dietzen is here, the CEO of Pure Storage. Hot off the keynote. Scott, great to see you. Great to be back on theCUBE. So I love the nickname. I grew up in a town where everybody had a nickname. We got Dietz, we got Hat, we got Danzy, we got Kicks. I don't know. Man, you can call me V. V. He's, I guess, just that Stu. I mean, that's <laughs> it, you know. So, so again, great show here. Love the venue. Um, how'd you guys pick this place? So I, I can't say I was involved in the choice, um, and uh, it was, it's, this place has a really illustrative history. I mean, it goes back to the 1800s, uh, and actually they manufactured steel here uh, during World War II. I think they were turning out two battleships uh, a week. Uh, but another piece of history that maybe you know, isn't as is, is nice is this is the last time this venue is going to be used. Uh, so it is scheduled to be brought down uh, to make way for new, new condos, I guess. Uh, so we really wanted to celebrate uh, the venue and its history, um, it's it, it, just a great industrial feel to it. And they're tearing down a bunch here, the new Warriors facility is going to be in dog patch, right? Yes, and so yeah, we, we can't feel too bad about it because we are indeed celebrating uh, the Warriors uh, They needed a bigger house for all those trophies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they're uh, poised to have a really good run, but I think Cleveland's going to be there contending with them for the next several years to come, and it's really exciting. Well, hopefully my Celtics will get there in the next four or five years with some yeah. draft picks. So, I want to talk about sort of the ascendancy of Pure. When we first met you, you had a pretty simple message. It was like, look, we think we can deliver way better performance for lower cost. I mean, boom. It wasn't the same cost. I remember you were very forced. I said, about the same, right? You said, no, no, lower. We have the best data reduction technology in the business. I remember talking to you at Oracle Open World yep. about that. And that's fundamentally what happened. And you attacked the legacy install base, and you won that game but you're not resting on that. You've got to take it now to a next level. Talk about that next level of, well, talk about where you came from and the next level of data and you know, beyond just sort of public cloud. But, um, you guys have talked about this too, right? If you look at the curve of Moore's Law, I, I mean, mechanical disk doesn't follow Moore's Law. And so um, the, the cost reduction curves, we did the math and we said, look, we're going to be able to drive down the cost of storage. We're going to be able to drive up the density and power cooling space, simplicity can dramatically reduce the cost of storage. But Flash is going to help us, right? You know, we've gotten to the point where Flash is, you know, even with a tighter component market, um, it's cheaper to buy raw than fast disk uh, and way cheaper to deploy. So, we, you know, we say, World Bank talked about saving millions of dollars by deploying pure stor storage and getting a 5X performance boost at the same time. So if we can help customers pay for their storage both you know, in terms of cost savings as well as new business value, that's a great well, outcome. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you know, Wikibon's been on the right side of that prediction since that, er early on. That's very true. I, and, I used your data. Been very fact. aggressive about that. But but the the thing that excited us most was the second thing you said, which was the business impact, the business value. So I want to come back a little bit again to history. It used to be, I would buy EMC for block and NetApp for file. You're sort of attacking that premise. Talk about that. Oh, so we started in uh, the performance end of the storage market, which is dominated by Block, because we knew that one was going to be the first to shift to all flash. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, we've already seen that play out. I mean, even the legacy vendors in their install base are inclined to, to use flash, because it's, it's actually cheaper than 15K disk uh, to, to put in. But one of the, you know, the, the, that tech is about to hit a wall, because as SSDs get bigger, you know, we've, we've grown SSDs almost 400 fold since Pure got started but we haven't changed the pipe, right? So if you make um, a vessel 400 times larger, but you have the same pipe going in and out of it, you're losing a lot of access uh, to data. And this is this new sea change to new protocols where we're shedding all of uh, the disk. And I, I think the second big change is we're bringing this same wave to big data, right? So mm -hmm. we've been playing in the block market, now we're playing in the file and object market because big data workloads, especially those that require um, deep learning, you just need massively parallel uh, storage, and you're never going to be able to get that with you know, 20 plus year old storage designs. So Scott, when you talk to your customers, especially when you're talking to the C-suite, how does storage fit into that discussion? I loved in the keynote, there's a lot of discussion of you know, next generation applications, everything from the uh, you know, buzzwords of the AI and ML uh, type pieces out there, but you know, what, what are the big challenges that your customer's facing and how much is it a storage discussion, how much is it kind of that digital transformation? 
Yeah, I think we see all of it. Um, you know, we, we'll, we'll talk to customers that, that find um, that they, they can't innovate quickly, right? And they want to get so much more value uh, from their data. You know, one of the uh, studies we cited in the keynote today was 80% of companies think they could make 20% more on the top line if they could just get insights out of their current data. I mean, that's a staggering statistic. 20% top line for every company if they could just get more out of their data. We want to make that possible, right? They're constrained with very expensive um, legacy technologies that they simply can't give them the access to the data. They don't have the performance to mine those insights and the infrastructure is so cumbersome uh, they just can't evolve and, and move their business forward. And so providing that recipe, you know, giving customers the ability to get dramatically more value out of their data and do it for lower cost is working. Yeah, and it's been interesting to watch uh, kind of the, the data center to the cloud and now cloud to the edge, uh, and you've got solutions that are spanning across them. Um, you know, how do you see that maturing and re really the vision to expand where, where Pure fits in the, in the discussion? So, you know, from early on we targeted uh, the cloud market because, you know, we, we knew that this is where the future lies, right? Even traditional enterprises still want all the benefits of the cloud inside of their and, own And when IT you say cloud, you mean it's SaaS providers, service providers, yeah, as well I, as... So, so yeah. we, 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 we talk about the, the, the model that the, you know, the, the big three are using, but you know, this is very popular in um, you know, many other clouds. Uh, you know, there are, the, the world is not moving to three data centers. Companies like Apple and Facebook um, are very committed to their own data center investment. Um, and you know, we seek to be a supplier to that consumer internet, um, the um, software as a service and infrastructure as a uh, service of providers. Um, because we, that's where the data center is going. Um, but you know, what we've seen recently with the proliferation of Internet of Things and sensor data is customers are just growing these huge data footprints that are just too big to move across public networks. Um, you know, so we talked about in the keynote, in three years, only one out of every 20 bytes that's generated can fit on the internet uh, that year, right? 2.5 so out of 50, I think. 2.5 2. Right? out of 50 zettabytes. 50 zettabytes will be produced that year, uh, but only 2.5 is going to be transferred across the internet for the entire year. So we've got to get better as an industry at helping customers capture that data where it's generated, right? So that's, we call that edge. You know, sometimes it'll be on the devices or it'll be in data centers that are close to the edge. And they've got to mine insights from it right there. You know, one of the- Absolutely. One of the yeah. exciting demos we're showing here is actually AI co-processing with the public cloud. So we've got um, an edge data center that we're running deep learning in, um, but then we're selecting particular data sets through that deep learning to transfer it up to the public cloud for more ma uh, machine learning. Those, those key nuggets, the needles may be a transfer, because otherwise it's too expensive to transfer all you the data. You can't transfer all of it. So, so if it's a self-driving car, you know, if I'm just routinely right. driving along, yeah. Yeah. no big deal, you keep the data. But if I slam on the brakes because a dog's in the crosswalk, that's the thing you want to do the training yeah, on. That can't be an asynchronous operation, right? So, okay, uh, you're already getting the hook. I can't, can't believe it, he just got here. <laughs> but we got some, we got, Cube is a comfortable place, but we got to throw some hard questions at you. So, Please. Stu asked me the other day, or actually today, who's going to reach a billion dollars first? And you don't have to predict, you can leave that to us. Nutanix or, or Pure? Okay, so talk about HCI. You, you, you made some comments up on stage about hyper-converged. Um, said, you know, it's good for its own specific use cases. What's your point of view on that? Oh, so first of all, uh, Nutanix has built a, a great business. Awesome, and we're, yeah, we're, sure. you know, we're absolutely fans. I, I will say, in the, in the markets, those two new markets that we're playing in, in the cloud market uh, and in the next-gen applications and deep learning, we don't see hyper-converged infrastructure. We do see hyper-converged in um, business and enterprises, but it's usually the smaller scale uh, deployments. Um, the reason is, at scale, you don't want to co-locate applications, data, and storage all in a single tier. It limits the ability to easily scale um, independently. You know, if you need more capacity, you need more application compute versus data compute. You want to be able to flex those independently, which is why all the big clouds and enterprise data centers run converged rather than hyper-converged. But the change that's coming is fast networks are changing this even more, right? So what's, I believe, going to turn hyper-converged inside out is it's now more efficient to access remote storage than it is the same the storage on your local chassis. And that's because we're offloading compute to the, the server NIC cards on there. So these new protocols, NVMe over fabrics, are actually making the network finally really the computer. There's right. no longer a chassis that's even meaningful. Big fan of that, that infrastructure and NVMe over fabric. Okay, next, next, next tough question is the narrative is it from the big guy, EMC in particular, pure is small, they're losing money, and, and 
and your, your return narrative is, Dell EMC, they're large, they're slow, they're outdated and confused, <laughs> okay? We love that, you know, it gets a little juices flowing. But here's my question. A lot of customers are large and slow and outdated and, and confused, so how do you get that fat middle to move faster and become a tailwind for you guys? So I, I think it's happening. I mean, customers just want uh, to, technology to be made easily. I mean, one of the disruptors that's really helped is the AWS user experience, right? right. AWS has reset the bar for IT everywhere because people are like, why am I paying for consultants to visit my data center and you know, take care of this mainframe or client server era technology that used to be so expensive, you know, um, consultants coming along with it and permanently staying with it was okay. That's not okay, right? The world needs to move to self-driving infrastructure and um, they need radically better performance if they're going to use these new, t new techniques. And so I think the key motivation is customers need to get more value from their data and they need to drive down cost and we're in this sweet spot of being able to provide it and these 20 plus year old designs can't. There's no way. So it's inevitable is really what I'm taking away from that and you've got a lead that you can sustain in your view. Uh, you know, it, it, it's been very interesting to watch our competitors talk about you know, the new Flash Array X uh, with all NVMe and the new Flash Blade. They've said these are science projects that won't be real for three years, and yet we've won one of the biggest AI platforms uh, in the world. You know, we're 25% uh, or more of our business is coming from cloud customers. So you know, from where we sit, uh, things are going exactly as we'd hoped. Love it, love it. We're talking about the edge. You're pushing, pushing the envelope at the edge. All right, Scott, we'll give you a last word. I know you're super busy, but give us the, the wrap up, the bumper sticker on Accelerate 2017. Oh, it's, it's such a phenomenal uh, group coming together to talk about uh, innovation. You know, we, we've already shipped the, uh, the hardware uh, form factors this year with our new, our new Flash Array and the new Flash Blade. But the thing that I'm so excited about is we've got more than two years of software innovation uh, teed up, right, that we, we've, not, we've been very quiet about. Uh, so you know, when you can bring two years of innovation and pack it into six months like we have this year, it makes things really exciting. Well, congratulations at getting to this point. We're really excited about the, the future. Scott Dietz, Dietzen, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Great to see you again. Thank you, always good to be on theCUBE. All right, keep it right there, buddy. We'll be back with our next guest. This is Pure Accelerate, live from San Francisco. We'll be right back. <laughs>